Some of my fondest memories growing up were playing Sudoku with my grandmother, who was addicted to the game. She also played other math games with me, some that she made up herself. She was a math teacher after all. In hindsight, I realized that the games I played with my grandmother probably built a stronger foundation in math than what I was learning at school. I knew that I wanted to make my privilege in this regard accessible to all people. Inspiration hit me when I saw the fold scope. Although it may seem unrelated, the philosophy behind it can be applied to board games. In 2014, while a PhD student at Stanford, Jim Sigolsky, along with Professor Manu Prakash, created the Foldscope with the idea of making the best possible microscope for less than a dollar. You heard that right, less than a dollar. That turned my idea of what it means to be an inventor on its head. I went from imagining a Tony Stark character churning out high-tech gadgets that people had rarely dreamt of before, to someone who works to simplify something and make it more accessible to people on a lower budget. This can sometimes be a lot harder than building a complex system. In Professor Prakash's TED talk, he demonstrates how even though the fold scope looks like a simple toy, the aspects of engineering that go into something like it are fairly sophisticated. I believe every child should have access to the games that help them learn a new way. Is there any kid who wouldn't rather play Scrabble than do their spelling homework? But the reality is that many people around the world cannot afford to pay $20 for a board game. If you think about it, the value of a board game lies in the logic of the game rather than the cardboard board, factory made plastic pieces, and neatly printed packaging not to mention the 10 different plastic bags you have to deal with. By removing all of this, board games can be stripped down to their core. Let me elaborate on this point. What if we had a website that hosted a bunch of PDFs of board games that people could play at ease? These could be easily printed and distributed by NGOs. By crowdsourcing games, it could even help grow creativity in kids as they synthesize concepts that they've already learned and make an entertaining game to teach the content to other students. Not only this, but the number of board games the average person is exposed to, regardless of budget, increases dramatically and the experience of gamified learning can become more commonplace and spread, spread across many disciplines. This can potentially have effects beyond just teaching kids basic arithmetic. Many in-demand skills, such as math, science, and critical thinking happen to be the most culturally hated subjects in the United States. Kids don't have biases against any particular subject because they aren't cool. Ask any parent of a toddler who has had to answer millions of questions about even the most mundane things. Using this natural curiosity young kids have, we can start to foster a culture that enjoys these fun and interesting subjects that have traditionally been looked down upon as nerdy or uncool. This not only creates a culture more accepting of different interests, but also a supply of STEM field workers to fill the immense demand opening up in recent years and likely years to come. Learning to code is becoming more and more of a necessity in many jobs. Although you cannot write code in a board game that you can directly run, many of the critical thinking patterns of computer science can be easily taught without a computer. For example, Boolean logic and loops are fundamental to co any code one may want to write. Breaking up larger tasks into smaller tasks, finding the simplest, least repetitive solution to a problem, and ensuring against edge cases are more general ethics of thinking that are crucial to programming. All of these skills are possible to teach without the ability to actually run code. We can help the youth of today learn how to think in order to be successful in STEM fields. With minimal cost, high number, and focus of the board games, many problems of equity and low interest in emerging fields can be tackled. Wealth-based inequity can be tackled since the games are practically free and easily distributable. Educational charities can easily print a bunch of copies of board games. Children can go to their local library. Newspapers can print games. The possibilities are endless. The high number of games allows for essential 21st century skills 
to be incorporated into practically any other interest so that there is, for example, a math game for everyone. The focus of the board games can also help foster interest in domains that are culturally looked down upon. Our children are the future. Let's make our future brighter.